Welcome to Mind Body Monday, and thank you all for joining me. In today's Mind Body Monday, I'm going to share with you and you're going to discover my four steps to ending allergies for good. That is seasonal allergies. And there's going to be some live question and answer at the end. Now, this topic was prompted as been an, an interest and a passion of mine uh, because many patients suffer from seasonal allergies and uh, some members of my family as well. But I was on a recent camping trip in the Golan in northern Israel and one of our campers came down with um, major allergies, running eyes, itchy throat, sneezing, groggy, you know, out there in nature camping. It's not fun at any time, but especially camping also in the heat and mosquitoes, it's not fun. So the good news is we did have some antihistamines, my first aid kit, and it settled things down. The question is, are antihistamines the long-term approach? Well, a quick research showed that, you know, the Cleveland Clinic has done some pretty extensive research on long-term use of antihistamines, and it is not the pathway to go for the long term. It's okay if you're camping or an occasional attack from allergies, but what I'm going to share with you is a sustainable, long-term, feasible approach that holds the promise of ending your allergies for good. The Cleveland Clin Clinic showed that long-term use of antihistamines could increase the risk of dementia by 54% in one of their studies. It also causes drowsiness, headaches, grogginess, low blood pressure, rapid heart rate, uh, worsen urine, urinary retention uh, can affect glaucoma. Just really a helpful thing for the short term, but not a long term solution. And um, last allergy season, I had a 68 year old man come to see me who lived five minutes walk from, from Shul. However, on the road to uh, off the side of the road was a gorgeous olive tree, which he didn't think was really gorgeous, was target enemy number one. And this season, springtime, it was a disaster. If he walked anywhere near that, it would set off all those symptoms, the itchy nose, itchy eyes, runny nose, dry throat, grogginess, just awful seasonal allergy symptoms. So what he decided to do, he didn't want to take the long-term antihistamine route. So he took another alternative path to Shul in the morning, which took him an extra 18 to 20 minutes of walk, which was not convenient, but that was his only option at the time until he heard about my four-step program. I'm going to share with you some of the outcomes from him at the end. And also a WhatsApp that I just got in today as I was preparing um, this Mind Body Monday from someone on our 1445, 1440 Thrive WhatsApp group from the States who shared her story about taking this four-step approach as well in the before and after. So stay tuned to the promise that awaits you as well. Now, the functional medicine approach is a holistic approach. It's an integrative approach. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Because after the last 30 years in private practice, I've been privileged to have helped many people heal, recover from a whole um, host of chronic diseases and illnesses. And allergies is absolutely top on the list. Food allergies, environmental allergies, etc. Today, it's food. The spotlight on is on food allergies. What people don't realize is that sixty percent of your immune system is housed in your gut. So it's imperative that a healthy gut is nurtured and cultivated in order to help the immune system in general, but specifically against allergies. Just imagine a farmer walking into his field and sees a, a rotting fruit at the end of his apple tree. Now, he may come and treat it and put a little bag over it or netting over it to protect it, but he's not going to stop there. He's going to trace that tree down to the trunk, down to the root system, and realize that the, the tree is actually growing in a bog because one of the 
uh, filtration, water filter pipes, etc. Irrigation pipes got all messed up, and that was just uh, bogging down the tree. So hence, the fruit's going to be not um, not ideal and optimum. So treating that fruit on the tree symptomatically by putting a protective covering over it is like taking an antihistamine. It's a symptomatic treatment, but will not affect. Uh, it will not cause a healing of the whole tree or the other fruits in on that tree or perhaps the orchard if it goes on to affect the orchard as well. This approach is really a holistic approach. It's getting to the root of the issue. It's lifting up the hood of the body and really getting to understand what is causing, what is triggering the allergy within the body because two people can walk past that olive tree. One has this huge allergy attack and the other is this wow admiring the gorgeous olives and um and flowers on the tree and remains unaffected why because one has a robust immune system and the other one has yet to develop that and this is what i'm going to share with you today so um let's let's go through the four steps and um i'm going to share with you some key testing to do at the end as well to help track your progress. So the step one is really a pathway to happy and healthy living as well. It's replacing the bad with the good. What that means is increase nutrient-dense eating. Each bowl or plate of food needs to pack a punch, so to speak. It needs to be high in whole foods, a rainbow color of vegetables and um, avoiding, we're going to get to the avoiding the triggers, but a rainbow food palette with green vegetables and yellows and reds and oranges, because all orange colored vegetables, that is because different colors of vegetables contain different phytonutrients, different uh, flavonoids that help to decrease inflammation in the body. So each meal you have, you really want to focus on the following food groups of the foods that I'm going to be sharing with you. And obviously removing wherever possible or avoiding pesticides because this ups the toxicity level in the body and makes it more difficult for the body to deal with toxic burden. And as a result, allergies can be worse as well. So number one, avoid triggering foods. This is all in step one. Uh, reduce the bad and increase the good. So step one in, or sub point one in, ste in step one is, is avoiding triggering food. So those foods, triggering foods are pro-inflammatory foods. These are foods that increase inflammation in the body. So if someone has seasonal allergies, the body's already inflamed. There's more histamine, there's more cortisol, there's more adrenaline. These are stress hormones. I'm going to cover more of that in step three. So having um, removing the trigger foods like uh, refined oils and processed oils like canola oil, for example, and processed foods like white flour, cakes, sweets, chocolates in, in excess and additives, factory prepared foods, all these food groups are triggers for the body because they increase inflammation. So if there's inflammation already, you want to reduce those triggering foods. Um, the second aspect is really um, the triggering foods. One of those is, is sugars. I don't want to get off the topic too much, but it's really important to put on the map that sugar is one of the most pro-inflammatory foods out there. And in, in the States today, there is over there are over 80, maybe 70 or 80 different names of different forms of sugar because the manufacturers want to hide it in all sorts of languaging. That way people are less sus uh, suspecting or less can identify it with more difficulty on the label. And while I was on my camping trip, one of the campers was a sugar junkie and he was a healthy sugar junkie, so he thought, because he'd have a protein yogurt in the morning, which is high in sugar. Then he would have some cereal frosties, which is more sugar. And then on his barbecue later, he had duck sauce, which I think has 
15 grams, which is three tablespoons of sugar in that. So if you add up all his sugars over the last 24 hours, it's a whopping heap of sugar. And he was the allergy sufferer. Just I don't know how it all stacks up uh, because it could have been someone who, who guards his sugar intake but also suffers from allergies, but it's just so much more prevalent in people whose sugar intake is high and there are many, many reasons to just to avoid it. It takes about three weeks to train our tongue to do with less or do without sugar. And if you are interested in the topic, I will post some um, some resources in the chat at the, at, in, during the live Q&A today um, regarding some two, two really incredible books on the topic. Um, and there's also a 90 minute video by um, that was by I'm just looking it up here. Um, yes, by Robert, Dr. Robert Lustig. It had over 7 million views on um, called um, Sugar, the Bitter Truth. So there's lots on the topic. I'll put some of these these um, links in the chat as well. So basing on the philosophy that I practice in my personal life and in my my medical practice, which is the 1440 Thrive philosophy, which is taking one step at a time. If you just eliminate one spoon of sugar a day, then there are about 365 less teaspoons or spoons of sugar in your diet, in your body by the end of the year. So it really, really does stack up. So sugar being an inflammatory substance, that is one of the trigger foods that you absolutely want to avoid. The next point within removing the bad and increasing the good is increasing what I'm going to call anti-inflammatory foods. And these foods are high in plant chemicals called phytonutrients. And some of those are anthrocyanins. And what these foods do is turn off the inflammation, the allergy causing inflammation in the body. And Green leafy vegetables are a food group that is very powerful at doing that. And a lot of research has been done on broccoli sprouts, and they're very easy to sprout. They're very high in a, in a powerful healing compound uh, based on a sulfur molecule, which is very, very healing. Many, many peer-reviewed uh, articles on the anti-cancer benefits of the broccoli sprout. But if you don't have that, then leafy, any leafy greens, broccoli itself, cauliflower, which is a high in sulfur food, I'll get to that shortly, kale, bok choy, and any of the leafy greens, beet greens as well. And you get these baby salads, which are rich in these purple and green leaves. These are very potent anti-inflammatory effects in the body. Then the other foods that are anti-inflammatory are fish with high fat like salmon and mackerel, um, tuna also if it's quality, and then adding some berries into your diet as well, specifically strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, cherries, pomegranate seeds, and an unusual berry that I've started using in my diet over the last six, eight months called sea buckthorn. It's a, a orange, deeply orange vegetable. Each color has a different phytonutrient that helps to turn on a healing in the body and turn off inflammation in the body. So you want a whole spectrum. There's another food group that is high in what I'm going to call antihistamine effects. And this is very important if you have seasonal allergies, because these foods are high in quercetin, uh, anthrocyanins, sulfur-rich vegetables. And some of these are, again, those um, berries I mentioned, cherries, grapes, red cabbage, and purple rice or wild rice is also very high in this element as well. There's um, antihistamine properties in parsley, in turmeric, in ginger, in chamomile, nettle, and in tulsi, which is holy basil. Now, you don't need to go out and buy all these supplements. This is food. Let food be your medicine and medicine your food. So by just going and shopping smartly, shopping consciously, making smart choices, you're able to find all of these foods in your local store. And just adding small amounts every day, two to three times a day, you can have um, adding these as 
condiments or pop it in your in your salads. Deepening in this topic a little bit about uh, foods, the therapeutic foods for allergies is sulfur rich foods. Sulfur, as I mentioned, has a lot of healing properties in the body, specifically for allergies. It repairs DNA um, and the damage to cell walls in the body, which is where um, which stimulates histamine, if, which is causes the irritation and allergies. So you want to increase sulfur rich foods like broccoli once again and broccoli sprouts, garlic onions, scallions, it's the red, uh, the um, green, green onions, and cabbage. And lastly, the food group called cruciferous vegetables, which is the arugula and the broccoli and the cauliflowers and kohlrabi, kale, radishes, and of course, eggs are also high in sulfur. So this whole way of eating is, is a spotlight on turning off the inflammatory aspects in the body, which is driving allergies. So it's much easier to take an antihistamine pill than it is to make proper food choices and eliminate the sugars and the processed oils and the junk in our diet. But long-term healing, vitality, longevity, brain health, and all this is, as well, as I've covered in previous Mind Body Mondays, is based on what I call NDE, nutrient-dense eating. So what you're hearing here is the spotlight on the, um, the benefits of these foods specifically regarding allergies, although there are many, many other benefits as well, because it helps these eating this way, detoxes the body, supports the immune system, turns off the inflammation in the body, and therefore the body will be able to respond better to any potential um, allergy threat. Eating this way also, and I'll cover this a little bit uh, in one of the in the second step regarding um, the fibers. These are prebiotic fibers, postbiotic fibers, and we'll cover probiotics very briefly. But eating this way sets up your gut. Remember, where two thirds of the immune system is based in the gut, sets up the gut for a healthy, robust, diverse microbiome, which helps to support healing, turning off inflammation in the body. Wow. That was step one. Let's take a nice deep mind body Monday breath in. Gently pushing your shoulders down as you breathe out, feeling a soft stretch on your neck so you can absorb and digest all this healing info. And do one more mind body Monday, breathing in. And a soft exhalation, letting your shoulders relax. And Let's bring our attention back again. There's a good time to hydrate your body. Let's talk about step number two. And step number two is using powerful gut healing nutrients, including probiotics. And this is an important step because the majority of our immune system is in our gut. So we want to support the gut. Now, in a previous Mind Body Monday, it's number 27. You can refer to my YouTube channel. I'll put it in the link towards the end of today's Mind Body Monday, a video of that replay where I do take a, a, a deeper dive in um, the topic of allergies and your gut. And I go more specifically into some key nutrients I spoke, spoke then about quick and effective ways to help your gut uh, regarding allergies and then five of my favorite supplements. I'm not going to discuss those five favorite supplements now. I want to just give you three quick wins with another three supplements. But there I discussed quercetin, vitamin C, B-complex, magnesium, and something called NAC. Um, and... There I went into detail about each one of these, how it will help you, why it is important. And I'll just um, give you a teaser. There are many, many forms of magnesium because magnesium was one of the key supplements I spoke of. So if you have an allergy, uh, an airborne allergy, then magnesium sulfate is one of the best forms of magnesium for allergy, allergy sufferers because it's a bronchodilator. It expands the, the bronchioles 
and helps the, the airways and helps breathing much, much better. It relaxes the whole respiratory tree and um, it also helps um, with the whole histamine cascade. And um, that way the body can just re relax and breathe better. There are those other supplements. Check out the replay in Mind Body Monday 27 on a deeper dive on those allergies, those supplements for allergies. However, I just want to give you another three particular supplements for a quick win for today. And those are probiotics and uh, omega-3 and then curcum. Now, each one of these really does deserve a deep dive on their own. In a previous Mind Body Monday, I did speak about probiotics, so see my YouTube channel for those. But today, I want to just talk about curcum, which is a turmeric extract I'm sure everybody has heard of because it has so many widespread applications. I've been using it in my practice for the last 25 years, and there are better ways to use it and less better ways to use it. But it is a simple spice that is a powerful anti-inflammatory and very much helps with seasonal allergies, as well as a host of other um, chronic conditions in the body. So that's something you want to consider is starting simply with a, with a spice in your diet. Although that's a low percentage of cucumoids, it's about 5%. If you use a... Uh, Pharmaceutical grade is about 95% curcumoid, and it's often mixed with 5% of, uh, of uh, biopirine, which is a form of pepper, black pepper, which helps the absorption digestion of it, which is also helps the synergy of the turmeric to be a stronger anti-inflammatory. So that's something you may want to consider. And then omega-3. This is important. Remember, coming back to the food groups, salmon, the mackerel, sardines etc and supplementing with a supplement where you will take a, an omega-3 which helps to support mucous membranes and helps turn off the inflammation in the body and for omega-3 you want to have a high dha and epa um, compounds in there because not all omega-3s are the same so i've given previous mind body mondays on that as well so see my channel for more info but i just want to put on the map these new three for this Mind Body Monday, which is a good uh, probiotic, curcum, turmeric extract, and a high quality omega-3 as well. Now, a lot of my patients ask me, you know, what's the, what's the reason we for putting so much emphasis on the gut when it comes to allergies? Because when a person's coming with itchy eyes, groggy, runny nose, itchy throat, post-nasal drip, and they're thinking, head. ENT, they're not thinking gut. Well, come back to our fruit analogy. This is the fruit. This is the symptom at the end of the tree. And we want to trace that fruit through its twigs and branches down the trunk into the roots of the tree, which is the guts of the tree, so to speak, which is our gut, which is where the majority of our immune system is housed. So we want to be treating them helpfully, you know, with symptomatically as well, and there's some strategies as well for that. But at the same time, we want to support the gut. So if you imagine the gut uh, being this whole uh, military operation where the, the, gut, the microbiome is this incredible synergistic organism, it's another organ really, like a forest floor just full of so much plant life and diversity. It's training our immune cells, uh, uh, immune cells and the bacteria there are like the little drill sergeants and they are commandeering a vital, robust immune system. So it's, it's a very important piece to always nurture the gut when we're looking at seasonal allergies as well. And obviously staying away from any uh, microbiome damages, gut damaging substances like antibiotics wherever possible, um, eat organically because herbicides and pesticides and disinfectants, all those things disrupt the microbiome. So this is all part of step two, turning down the um, triggering foods and turning up the healing foods as well. And an easy way to remember step two is just you know, turn a blind eye to the negative, 
and focus on the positive and you'll walk through life a lot more cheerful and a lot more happier when you do that. Let's take another Mind Body Monday. Deep breath in. As you breathe out, pushing your shoulders down gently, allowing a soft stretch on your neck that's comfortable and safe for you. Another deep breath in. And breathing out. Wonderful. Let's get to step three. And just before you, you do that, it's another opportunity to hydrate. Okay. Step number three to ending allergies is managing stress. And I'm going to say what I'm going to say now also in step number four. That managing stress, so many people have heard about it and it's rather, you know, blase and people don't really pay any attention to it. But it is absolutely essential to proactively manage stress. It's, it's, it's not an add on. It's a fundamental feature of healthy, buoyant, vibrant living. And it's a little bit like you, you baking the most delicious chocolate cake healthy one, so to speak, for your child or grandchild's birthday. And you leave out the flour. So you don't really have a cake. You don't even have a pancake. I'm not sure what you've got, but it's not a cake because the flour is incredibly important ingredient that's going to make or break the day. So is stress management. And there are many strategies on my my gut healing program are going to a deep dive in the fastest way to manage stress, to heal the gut. But for now, just simply using the breath. And that's one of the reasons we've taken these Mind Body Monday breath breaks between each step, because it helps to teach your body to um, oxygenate. When you're oxygenated, You've got more oxygen running through your body, through your brain. You're more calmer. You're more relaxed. The immune system is happier, and it helps to reduce inflammation in the body. So stress raises cortisol. It raises adrenaline. It stimulates um, a whole cascade of the long term of inf inflammation in the body. So it's very, uh, uh, very important to actually manage it properly. It causes a breakdown in the gut and causes leaky gut. And in the previous Mind Body Monday, I went into leaky gut syndrome and how foreign proteins can enter into the, into the bloodstream and actually mount the immune attack and allergy from the inside. So it's allergy from the outside, allergy from the inside, leads to exhaust, exhaustion and all those other symptoms as well. So a simple way to manage stress is to use your breath to deal with um, the overwhelm, the stress, and many strategies, staying away from negativity, too much watching the news, et cetera, like that, but cultivating a happy being, a happy mindset. And there is a breathing technique, which is one of my favorite go-tos, and I call that the harmony breath. And it's a powerful way to turn off inflammation in the body, relax the autonomic nervous system, that's the part of the nervous system that regulates our entire being. And when we stressed, the sympathetic nervous system is, is increased, which is the fight and flight. And when we at rest, then the rest and digest part of the autonomic nervous system is active. That's the parasympathetic nervous system. And that allows the body to heal. And the breath, uh, breathing technique is one of the most powerful ways to settle things down. And we're not going to practice it for today. But if you stand for the Q&A and it comes up, then I'll share that with you. But for now, it the description is simply breathing in for four, the count of four, holding your breath for the count of four, breathing out for the count of four, and holding your breath for the count of four. Now, if four is too long for you, then do three. If that's too long for you, do two. Do whatever you can manage. And... Let's just do one round because it's hard for me just to share something with you and not give you that experience inside. So this is the audience participation section of Mind Body Monday. And if you're watching the replay and it's safe to do that, do that. But if you're driving or whatnot, then don't do this now. So let's do this together, putting down your pens. 
emptying your lungs. We're just going to do one round. And while I count to four, breathe in through your nose, through the count of four or whatever count you can. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four. And a long out breath through pursed lips. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four. And breathe normally. Well done. If you can't, didn't manage four, that's okay. I'm just curious, post in the chat what you noticed just doing that. And the idea with the harmony breath is to repeat it three or four times at the two bookends of your day before you go to sleep at night, which ensures a deep oxygenate, deeper sleep through oxygenating relax, the brain, relaxing body. And when you wake up in the morning, sets your, your day up for a calm, more focused day. You can repeat that four times at night, four times in the morning, or any time when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed. So managing stress, there are many strategies, that is just one of them. So we've practiced a breath already. Let's go on to step number four. Step number four is getting deep restorative sleep. And once again, this is a very, very, very important step. And in our modern day living, I see with I would say 90% of my patients, it's just not in place. It's a pillar of great mental and physical health. I gave a previous Mind Body Monday. I went to a deep topic on sleep. I'm not going to do that here, but see sleep as medicine. It really, really is medicine. And if you're baking that chocolate cake and you leave out that flour or the almond flour, whatever it happens to be, you will not have that cake and you'll disappoint all the kids. So getting deep restorative sleep is so important and hours on the clock is important, at least seven to eight. We Most of us have a sleep debt and research has showed that just two nights of poor sleep or insufficient sleep will throw off the, the hormonal system in the body and increase inflammation in the body because when we sleep, so much healing and so much repair is done in the body, specifically turning off inflammation. And when we sleep, we the brain, uh, the body stimulates uh, uh, cytokines, which are anti-inflammatory chemicals that mop up the body. And a whole lot of wonderful things go on the brain. See my previous Mind Body Monday episode on sleep and effects on the brain and uh, strategies to help you sleep better. Um, but for now, I want this a step four, getting sleep on the man. And that way, when, when a person has seasonal allergies, the body is overwhelmed, the sympathetic nervous system is raised, there's cortisol, there's adrenaline, there's stress hormones running through the body, the body's fatigued, exhausted, and battling. And sleep is a very, very fine way to really press, reboot, and reset on the system. Now, I've shared with you my four steps, and I am going to do a summary. But occasionally, I will have a patient who is following the program, the four steps, and yet they haven't had full resolution of the allergies. So this is where there is a little bit more detective work to be done, looking at um, possibly doing a, a home filtration system to filter the air with different systems to get rid of dust, house dust night, pollens, and all that sort of thing. It's a much more expensive way to go. But for chronic allergy sufferers, it could be a part of the strategy, identifying hidden molds, which can be in the bathroom or bedrooms and things like that as well. I'll also use other remedies as well to support the body, but as a four steps to get going. I wanted you to have this process so you can start beginning to use that. Just before I end, I want to just share with you two blood tests that I routinely run in my practice because I'm a firm believer of 
you can only manage what you measure. So I'm doing and running many, many tests in my practice, and that is to be able to get a before, during, and after, and course correct in between when I'm treating people with, with chronic issues, specifically allergies. And I'm always wanting to look at inflammatory markers when I'm treating allergies. And the two most important ones are e ESR, urethrocyte sedimentary rate, and CRP. V very often these CRP stands for C-reactive protein. And these tests um, uncover hidden inflammation in the body. So as, the, as my patients heal, these inflammatory markers will come down. And that's a very important sign of healing, real healing happening from the inside out. And then we track that over three months, over six months, over the year to make sure that is a lasting change in the body. So I'm just going to come back to that patient I started with in the beginning who, the, who was on the way to Shul in the morning on his five-minute walk and the olive tree set him off on a 20, 18 to 20-minute walk because he had all these allergy symptoms of a runny nose and itchy eyes and itchy throat and coughing and spluttering. And uh, after he followed my four-step program, he wrote to me and said, I'm happy to report that this spring, reading it off, um, I've had no allergic reaction to the blossoming trees, especially the olive tree I avoided. I've also done Pesach cleaning with no reaction to dust whatsoever. I no longer take antihistamines, and neither do I suffer from their after effects. And he is a 68-year-old um, man who's followed this program. We did have to do one or two additional things to give him that extra support, but he is absolutely free of allergies. He takes a shorter route, route and he now can see the true beauty in the olive tree. And I'll just share with you, I'm just going to look on my phone because I got a WhatsApp in um, just before I went live today from a someone on my 1444, 1445 WhatsApp group. And she's just written, I can attest to this. Last summer was my best allergy, um, allergy season ever. Thanks for sharing. Um, she said, you set me up with the right vitamins, minerals, and steps. I no longer take uh, Benadryl, Allegra, Claritin, etc. I've tried them all, she says. She used to have watery eyes, puffy eyes, sneezing, sneezing, head cold, head chest, congestion. And now she has had the best um, season ever. This is totally possible. It's not rocket science. You do need to follow the four steps. Let's review the four steps quickly. Four strategies to end seasonal allergies for good. Number one, limit uh, or replace the bad um, with good. That's focusing on nutrient-dense eating, eating clean as possible, avoiding trigger foods, base your diet on anti-inflammatory foods, and choose those specific antihistamine foods I discussed. Then I spoke about using powerful nutrient to heal the gut, gut lining, and turn off inflammation. I spoke about today about curcum, turmeric extract, omega-3, and probiotics. I spoke, to, um, I mentioned uh, managing stress and how important that is. And an easy way to remember your breathing is to put a reminder in your phone. A gentle reminder will go off once or twice a day. And once it's part of your lifestyle, that way you'll get it in at the two bookends of your day before you go to sleep, ensuring deep restorative sleep. Or, uh, and, and when you wake up in the morning as well, setting up your day for calm and focus. And then, of course, step number four was getting adequate sleep, deep restorative sleep. I'll also mention my two favorite anti-inflammatory tests that you can do, which is ESR and CRP. That way you can manage your progress because you can only manage what you measure. Thanks once again for joining me on Mind Body Monday. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Just remember that Mind Body Monday is all about self-care being the heart of healthcare. All you need to do is take one small step in the direction of health and healing in mind, body, and soul. And I'll see you next week.